And I'm sitting down with the one and only OG of crypto, Mr. Charlie Shrem. Charlie, thank you so much for coming on the, on the podcast, man. I feel the vibe in the room. Dude, Everyone's we're, excited. We're, it's popping off around it's here, man. Off, the music. I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready. I feel I'm ready for this bull market to come back. People are building. People are doing exciting things. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so you just gave a talk up there, uh, talked about a number of topics. One topic that really stood out to me, and I know you were being asked, like, what do you feel about maximalism and Bitcoin maxis? And you mentioned that you are maximalist on decentralization. Can you can you uh, touch on that just a little bit? So there's like a bunch of stuff that we all we all came into this industry. We all fell in love with with crypto for for whatever reason. But for most of us, there was some aspect of decentralization involved in that. We like the idea that we can have an asset that's our own. It's sovereign. No one can take it away from us. We like the idea of information that once it's published, no one can delete it or remove it. It's time stamped. No one can say, oh, you never did the work or whatever, proof of work. I like the idea of my money being in my account. No one can freeze it, reverse it, or tell me I can't spend money with you or that. All these tenants are tenants of decentralization. For me, what it meant to become a Bitcoiner, why I got in space over 10 years ago in the beginning. I feel like over the last 10 years, it's been watered down. Yeah. Now, there have been attempts, and for me, this is where maximalism came from. Bitcoin maximalism, Ethereum maximalism, Ripple, Ripple maximalism, maximalism on in, in different altcoins came when those specific, you know, subgroups of our industry felt like pushed into a corner, or pushed into a wall, where they felt that their messaging wasn't out there. They couldn't do what they want to do. And we saw a lot of negative negativity, hostility, and toxicity. So I'm not like a maximalist by any means. I love Bitcoin. I love crypto. I love everything. But at the same time, if you're trying to launch a project claiming to be decentralized and you're not, or you're promising to offer our industry something, but you're not, or you're lying, or your communication's not there, or you end up letting people, you know, borrow money from you, but you're rehypothecating money, you're doing staking, but they're using that money for as a hedge fund, or you're giving every politician every dollar under the sun of our money, then you're not decentralized, then you're not DeFi, you're a liar. And for me, I have become a decentralization maximalist. You can be Bitcoin, you could be crypto, blockchain, protocols, everything, but you gotta do what you're promising. You can't promise and then do something else. And that's what happened the past few years. You literally just described every project that, that took a shit in 2022, yeah, man. Right <laughs> that was excellent. So you are, what I would consider to be like one of the OG content creators in this space, you have untold stories that you've done, um, but you've never taken the like clickbaity, spammy, it's always been like a really heartfelt kind of podcast that you run. Yeah. What, what was your original intention with that? And like, where do you see the content creation space going around the crypto industry? Cause it's really kind of fractured uh, at some points. It's a great question. And I, and I don't know why other people create content. There's, there's a reason for everyone. For me, it was actually a therapy. Okay. When I got arrested in, 10 years ago, I struggled with PTSD and, and OCD. And there's there's a lot of a lot of methods, and for a lot of people don't want to talk about it, and I'm comfortable talking about it. But it it's, it's debilitating. There's like constant alarm bells ringing. Even coming here today to this conference, I feel like there's constant danger everywhere. I wake up with anxiety, I shake. Your body remembers these things. But the only thing that we could do is my therapist told me, uh, and my wife and I, Courtney, talked about this a lot, is when you... The only way to remove the power of what happened to you is to tell the stories. Sure. So I launched a podcast to just talk about the stories of what happened to me, the early days of Bitcoin, things like that. And and it works. It works telling the stories. I don't do it for money. There have been times there, uh, the show, even right now, there's no sponsors on the show, so we're not making any money doing it. But for me, it's just the best thing. It's the most beautiful. And the listeners, because I have listeners, it's like someone out there listening to me talk and I need that and we all need that. So thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Charlie, I'm a huge fan. I, so I love much. what you're doing for the space. You just kind of represent the good side of it, you thank know, you. and you've got a, you've got a hell of a story. I completely agree with the, the therapeutic side of things. Thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So grateful to have you on the channel, man. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you so much. Where can they find you? Untoldstories.com. Untoldstories.com. The Charlie Shrem show. Just Google my name. Listen to the show, please. And enjoy. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Really, such a pleasure to have you on, buddy. Thank you.